This video is a review of the properties of exponents and logarithms. So to start off, we're going to look at the properties of exponentials. So we'll start off by reminding ourselves what the number e is. It's often indicated by a lowercase uh, letter e. So that is equal to the number 2.71828, etc. It's not a repeating number, it's not a terminating number, uh, it just keeps going forever as an irrational number. Um, some different ways you can think about this is, one is that it's the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n, all quantity to the n, which forms gives it the base of uh, continuously compounding interest. If you substitute in some values for that number with different n's, you'll see what I mean. Or you could express it as the Taylor series of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial where factorial is you take a number and you multiply it by itself and the lower number, lower number, all the way until you get down to 1. And the factorial of 0 is defined to be 1 as well. Okay, and then we have e to the x, where we take this number to a given power, x, which I would say as e to the x, as I have written out there. So remind ourselves what uh, exponents are. If we have e times e, that's equal to e squared. Multiply a number by itself, that's squaring it. Multiplying a number by itself uh, three times, that's e cubed, e times e times e. And e to the n is multiplying a number times itself n times. Something I might indicate by this symbol pi, which is the multiplication analog of the sum symbol capital sigma. All right, so some interesting properties of exponentiation. When I have e to the n times e to the m, and all of these properties that I have listed here, these work for any general number as well, but I'm just showing them for e because e is a number that shows up so often in engineering and scientific applications. Okay, we have e to the n times e to the m. That's equal to e to the n plus m. So uh, a product of two exponents is the sum of those exponents. We have e to the m to the e to the n to the power m. That's a product of those exponents taking a taking a power to another power. 1 over e to the n, so dividing something by e to the n is like multiplying by e to the minus n. So therefore, e to the n over e to the m is equal to e to the n minus m, multiplying by e to the minus m. All right, then we can have um, non-integer uh, values or things like roots. We have the square root of e is equal to e to the 1 half because if I do the square root of e times the square root of e, I should get e. So according to this exponent sum rule, I have e to the 1 half plus e to the 1 half equals e. All right, I could also have the nth root of e. Um, you have to multiply this number n times by itself to get e, so that's e to the 1 over n. Or I have the nth root of e to the m, which is equal to e to the m over n. So any number that I have, if I take that to the power of 0, then that's going to equal 1. If I take 1 to any power, that's going to equal 1. 1 is a multiplicative identity. And any, and any number, or sorry, 0 taken to any power also is going to be 0, because anything multiplied by 0 is going to give us 0. Right, so those are our properties of exponents. So moving back over here to logarithms. Logarithms is sort of the inverse operation of exponentiation. So if I have 10 squared, that's 10 times 10, which is 100. So the log base 10 of 100 is equal to 2. So this says, what power do I need to take the number 10 to to get the number 100? And the answer is 2. If I take 10 squared, I get 100. So 5 to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over 25, according to our exponent rules. So the log base 5 of 1 over 25 is negative 2. If I take 5 to the power negative 2, I get the number 1 over 25. So in general, a to the x equals y. 
I can solve for x by saying the log base a of y is equal to x. All right, so there's a special name for the log base e, and that name is natural log, L, usually signified by ln, the natural log of x. So if you work through all these rules and see what has to be true, you find out that for logarithms, when you have the logarithm of a product, log of a times b, that's equal to a sum of their logs, log a plus log b. If you have a log of a quotient, log a over b, that's equal to log a minus log b. So then correspondingly, I can show that the log of 1 over a is equal to the negative log of a. And very important property that the log of a to the b is equal to b times log a. So if I have some number where I take it to a power, I can pull that power out and it multiplies the log out in front. So then to look through our final few properties, the log of 1, that's going to be equal to 0 because it's kind of the inverse of this property here. Any number to the 0 equals 1, so the log, any logarithm of 1 is equal to 0. And the natural log of e to the x, if we see by this rule, we can pull the x out, and then we have the natural log of e. So the log base e of e is just going to be 1. So natural log of e to the x is equal to x. Those are inverse operations that cancel each other out. So e to the natural log of x similarly is going to cancel out those inverse operations, and you're going to get x as well. And then lastly, the natural log of 0, or any the logarithm of any base of 0, is going to equal negative infinity, uh, not giving us a, a finite number that we can use. So typically, we're going to be considering logarithms with positive arguments. If you use a negative argument, then you're going to be getting into some weird uh, complex values. So for the most part, uh, make sure that whatever argument you're putting into a log that you're giving a, a positive or at least a non-negative value.